Hey guys, and welcome to episode one of the Ultimate Physique Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Raggio, and now let's get into today's episode. So today we're talking all about bulking. So mainly the things that I see people do wrong and hopefully some practical applications you guys can put into your training and nutrition to get the most out of your next bulking or building phases. I don't really like to call them blocking phases. So I wanna talk about the three biggest mistakes that I see, and this is across the board. So like generally people that I see uh, in the gym, online, through social media, uh, potential clients that come through to me and tell me things they've done in the past. These are typically the biggest mistakes that I see. And the number one, I guess, mistake that, you know, all of these people kind of fall into is going on something that I like to call the seafood diet. and. No, I don't mean seafood as in fish. I mean seafood as in you see food and you eat it. So most people unfortunately think that like bulking is this magical phase where you can just eat whatever you want. You can just be a turd and stuff your face and you know, in the name of bulking, you're gonna build muscle and get bigger and stronger, which is a really poor way of going about it if you think about it logically, because it's probably just a surefire way that you gain body fat really, really rapidly and it'll kind of, you know, hinder your long-term progress. So avoid the seafood diet, avoid getting too fat because it will make your bulking phases unproductive and you will have to stop at some point to peel off body fat. And then if we think about that in terms of like long-term progression with a bulking or building phase, it means that you have to stop like intermittently and peel body fat off, start bulking again, peel body fat off. And it really kind of shortens the duration of time that you actually spend building muscle. So if you looked over a course of maybe three, six, 12 months, you probably spend a lot of time at maintenance or even cutting and very little time actually building muscle. So mistake number one, seafood diet, avoid it. (laughs) Mistake number two, being too fat to start with. So again, this is all too common and probably one of the biggest concerns I hear from people when they tell me, oh, I just feel like I keep getting fat every time I try and you know, go into a building phase. And the likely answer is just simply based on the fact that their body fat was too high to begin with. Um, so what I probably wanna break down into a little bit more details in terms of like ideal body fat ranges for both men and women and how you can set that up to be more productive for your building phases. So. In an ideal scenario for men, we wanna be somewhere in between 10 to 15% body fat, and for women, somewhere in about 20 to 25% body fat range in order to be like in a good spot to start a building phase. So just to kind of give you guys some context, if you are above that range, we run into a few issues. And the main one being, uh, it's down to something called the P ratio. So I won't go into it too much detail, but P ratio is basically the partitioning ratio of nutrients uh, and how it either gets directed to either muscle gain or fat gain. So the more body fat you have, the less insulin sensitive you are, meaning that carbohydrates are generally just kind of you know converted into fat. Um, and the leaner you are, the better that P, P ratio gets, the more ability we have to kind of convert that extra calories, hopefully from carbohydrates, into muscle glycogen. So being lean, or at least lean enough as a start point, is a really good idea, I guess for a couple of reasons, the main one being so you don't gain too much body fat, and the second one being that it allows you to have a bigger runway for progression. So if we think about you know, building phases, you will inherently gain body fat, you will also gain muscle, uh, albeit muscle growth is a quite slow process. So when we're lean enough to begin with, we've got that nice long runway of progression where we can still kind of gain muscle and we've still got enough wiggle room to gain some body fat as well. So just to kind of give you guys an example, if you're say a male and we say our ideal range is 10 to 15%, if you're starting at 10, you know, 10% body fat and you've got a 16, 20, 24 week building phase planned out, you've got lots of room. You could gain five, you know, 5% or 50% more body fat Uh, than you currently have and still be in a pretty good spot. Like if we think 15% body fat, it's like, uh, you know, you still probably got visible abs. So it's not a bad spot to be like, I guess, starting a building phase and also finishing a building phase because then it's just simply a matter of planning out these phases. Once you get to about 15, you know, maybe a little bit more percent body fat, you could simply just move into a maintenance phase or a cutting phase, bring that body fat back down and then kind of just continue that process again. And the same thing goes for women too. Because again, I coach women, I coach men, I talk to both a lot. And I think the 
shortfall for a lot of these people is that they don't actually spend any time building muscle at all because everybody wants to stay Instagram lean. They all want to have abs. They all want to look good for their photos and be able to take their shirt off, which is fine if you want to stay the same. But I guess the point of this podcast, the point of what we do is ultimate physique development. We want to take our physiques to the next level. So we need to dedicate times where we prioritize building muscle, we prioritize maintenance, we prioritize cutting. And, you know, over the course of 6, 12, 18, 24 months, that produces a vastly different physique, especially if you're a competitive physique athlete where maybe you need to fill out a weight cap. So for myself and a lot of my other guys who compete in classic physique, the goal is to fill out that weight cap. And if you're, you know, five or six kilos under the weight cap, it's like, you need to build muscle, bro. So we need to eat food. We need to get uncomfortable. And part of that process is gaining body fat. And again, the same for women. If you're a you know, competitive bikini athlete or just someone who simply wants to build muscle and, you know, I guess for a lot of women out there, they want to build their glutes, they want to build their legs, but they pretty much just eat in a deficit the whole time and they starve themselves and wonder why their glutes don't grow. It's like you need to actively dedicate time to building muscle. The glutes are a muscle, so you need to get uncomfortable. Body fat needs to come up slightly. But when we think about it in terms of, hey, a couple of phases down the line, you've now built tons of muscle. Your glutes are bigger. Your legs are bigger. Now we peel away that body fat. Wow, look at that. You've got a totally different physique. So point number two. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, but I hope that kind of makes sense. And point number three is, I guess, just being too aggressive with... Uh, these building or bulking phases, and I guess setting unrealistic timeframes. So they kind of marry up together. But the general premise being that like muscle gain takes time and in order to kind of do it productively, we need to spend, you know, 16, 20, 24 weeks in these building phases to actually grow some decent muscle tissue. And this is especially important if you're, you know, a natural athlete, over the course of a year, you might only be able to gain one, two, three kilos of muscle maybe in the space of a year, which is nothing. So it really serves you no purpose putting on 20 kilos if 17, 18 kilos is gonna be body fat and two kilos is gonna be muscle. So being really aggressive and setting those unrealistic timeframes kind of sets you up for fail. So if you said, you know, hey, Kyle, I wanna put on 10 kilos of muscle in 12 weeks. It's like, okay, well, that's not realistic. And when people kind of try to do it themselves, they do the DIY approach. They get on the scales, they go, hell yeah, I put on 10 kilos in 12 weeks. And it's like, okay, but did you actually put on any muscle? Are you measuring? Are you monitoring anything? No, you're not. You just got fat. And I think that's the trap most people fall into is they don't have enough time or they don't set enough time aside to actually do it properly. And again, I guess it kind of falls back into point number one. They just eat everything in sight set a really short time frame, get really fat, and then kind of just keep spinning their wheels on and on and on. So my advice to most people out there is like, set a realistic goal, first of all, like assuming that you can only put on a couple of kilos of muscle in the space of a year, make sure that that timeline is long enough that the majority of the weight you gain is actually muscle and not body fat. So again, if we're using our classic physique competitor who has a weight cap, maybe they need to fill out another two, three, four kilos of actual tissue to be competitive in their class, it doesn't make sense for them to put on 20 kilos and be you know, 20, 25 kilos over their stage weight because they're just gonna have to lose all that body fat anyway to make weight for their comp. So realistically, it's maybe put on you know, 10% of your current body weight. So if you're like 80 kilos, maybe eight to 10 kilos above where you are now is a good spot because we can hopefully assume that two, three, four kilos maybe is muscle, the rest is body fat. And trust me, it's far easier to lose fat than it is to build muscle. So. Realistic timeframes, don't be so aggressive. So those are the three main points and I guess the biggest mistakes that I see most people making. So how the hell do we fix this? How do we set up a building phase correctly in order to actually make decent progress? So the first one being establish your, I guess, baseline calorie. So again, you can go on our website, you can download our free calorie calculator. I might even leave a link for that one in this description as well. But you can go on any website, you can Google it, find your free calorie calculator and just establish your baseline calories. So typically it'll be expressed as your TDEE, which is a calculation on your height, weight, age, sex, and activity levels. I had to make sure I get that right. And it will give you your TDEE, so your total daily energy expenditure. From there, all you need to do is simply increase your calories. 
Now, again, when we kind of alluded to point number one on the seafood diet, you don't need to increase it a lot. So they've actually done tons of studies on this um, and looking at the amount of calories it takes to actually build muscle and to accrue tissue, you don't need to increase it very much. So like if we think about the old adage that around three and a half thousand calories is equivalent to half a kilo of tissue, it's like maybe you only need to increase your calories by three to 500 per day. So for an example, someone that's you know got a baseline calorie of 3000, that's only a 10% surplus on their current calorie intake. So three to 500 calories per day or around three to three and a half thousand per week is a great place to start. From there, we can safely assume that you're going to be roughly gaining about half a kilo a week thereabouts. And again, that's where we can get really good at sort of setting up that timeline. If we had a goal of maybe putting on 10 kilos, it's like, all right, if we assume that you're gonna gain half a kilo a week, you wanna gain 10 kilos, realistically, that's 20 weeks of gaining. So it's a more realistic time frame. It's more achievable and probably more productive because the majority of the tissue that we gain is hopefully muscle mass. So again, you really, really want to be lean to start with. I can't emphasize that point enough. So when we look at, again, the ideal ranges, 10 to 15% men, 20 to 25% women. And again, that allows you to extend that time frame out far greater, much more, I guess, gradual, slower process so that you actually are gaining muscle tissue and not body fat. So point number two, I guess, uh, to kind of make this building phase more productive is increasing training volume, frequency, and intensity across the duration of your building phase to ensure that all of the extra calories you're putting in are being put to good use. So when we look at like what it takes to build muscle, we need hard, productive training that's close to fail or within a, you know, a close proximity to fail. When we've got extra calories there, hopefully, if you're doing it right, you're increasing calories via extra carbohydrates. Extra carbohydrates means we've got more available, I guess, energy, you know, our muscles uh, preferred energy source is glycogen. So we've got lots of glycogen, we've got lots of, available, uh, lots of available energy to be able to put towards productive training. So it means that over the course of your 16, 20, 24 week building phase, we're gradually increasing calories from carbohydrates, meaning we've got, you know, gradually <laughs> increasing energy, um, you know, availability, meaning that hopefully across that whole 16, 20, 24 week period, your training should be getting better more productive, you know, you should be able to tolerate more volume and all of those kind of bits and pieces combined together means that you should be building more muscle. Because if we think about like the recipe for building muscle, we need surplus in energy, we need hard, you know, voluminous training, and we need, I guess, a high degree of intensity of effort. So, you know, within a close proximity to fail when it comes to like most exercises. So point number three, and I guess this is a big one for a lot of people who um, are under the assumption that like cardio kills gains. And I know I was there growing up, it was always cardio kills gains, bro. Like you just want to eat and train and that's it. When if we look at it realistically, if we start thinking about this process logically, health is our number one priority, especially when we're increasing body weight. Uh, and this goes for enhanced, non-enhanced athletes. The heavier you get, the more strain it puts on your heart, your liver, your kidneys, your body in general. So to maintain a baseline level of health, having some cardiovascular exercise in there is a great addition. Now, we can kind of do this a couple of ways. The first one being formal cardio, you know, literally jumping on the bike, treadmill, cross trainer, whatever it might be. Um, and the second way might be just activity from steps. So, you know, using a Fitbit, using an Apple Watch, whatever your sort of preferred fitness wearable is, and just tracking your daily activity. So I think the, the flip side of this, you know, maybe in another episode, we'll talk about cutting and how to set up a, a timeline for cutting. But when we set up a cutting phase, we want to incrementally increase activity output via steps and via cardio, and we want to decrease food. So we kind of have this like inverse relationship. With bulking or building, we don't necessarily need to increase activity via steps or cardio. We just wanna have a baseline level there and we wanna increase our food so that we can obviously build muscle, get bigger, get stronger, but we wanna maintain a baseline level of health. So I think for most people, like a nice roundabout figure is somewhere between like eight to 10,000 steps per day. 
just to allow enough energy to be kind of burnt uh, so that you have a bit more wiggle room to increase your calories up nice and high. And then in terms of like formal cardiovascular exercise, because if we think about steps, you're not really getting your heart rate up very high. It's kind of just like, you know, low heart rate activity. It's not really making you sweat or, or kind of get out of breath. In order for, you know, our cardiovascular system to be challenged, we do need some moderate intensity sort of exercise there. So moderate intensity, steady state cardio is a great example of this. Uh, I know for me personally, for a lot of my clients, for a lot of my athletes uh, in their off season phases, anywhere from like three to five days per week, 20 to 25 minutes of moderate intensity cardio is a great place. So that would look like maybe being on the bike, uh, getting a heart rate up between like, you know, anywhere between like 100 to 120 beats per minute. Again, this is individual based on body weight, age, height, whatever. But as a general rule, it's a great place to start. Um, and I guess the main thing with this as well, especially when we look at like that inverse relationship of activity and food, when uh, we implement that surplus, if our activity levels are really low, and let's just say, for example, we calculate our TDEE, we're really sedentary, we do no steps, we do no activity, our you know TDEE is 2,500 calories. If we increase our calories by 1,000, we're probably gonna gain lots of body fat because we don't move that much, we don't burn enough energy. So you kind of have two options there. It's either do more activity to kind of close that gap a little bit so your surplus isn't as big, or you just simply don't, eat more food, like you only increase your calories by a couple hundred. So you kind of have a couple options there, but I am of the opinion that doing some cardio and doing some extra activity is always better in terms of being able to push food higher. Uh, and again, on the flip side, that allows you to kind of train harder because like we said, more carbs, more calories, more glycogen means better gym performance and more muscle growth. So next point, point number four is measure everything. So we can't manage what we don't measure. Now, again, if we're looking at this in terms of like, hey, I wanna level up my physique, we need to kind of apply that athlete mindset, that athlete mentality where there is kind of no off switch. Shout out to my coach, Luke Miller. But there's more of a dimmer switch approach. So it's like in the off season or you know, during these gaining phases, we still wanna measure everything. We still wanna manage everything so that we can accurately assess what's happening and we can make appropriate changes where we need to based on the feedback. So when we look at, again, like the cutting phase, everything is really dialed in. We're tracking every single metric uh, down to the single gram because we have like a deadline to get on stage and we need to be single digit body fat. The same kind of rules apply during a building phase, but maybe we dial back the intensity. Maybe we allow for a bit more wiggle room. We allow for a bit more flexibility within our, you know, our framework or our diet, but we still wanna have that framework in place so that we can kind of manage and measure everything. So even, you know, for myself, for my clients, we still do weekly check-ins, we still do measurements, we still track food, we still take photos, we still do baseline health assessments like blood pressure, blood glucose, all of these things so that we can leave no stone unturned and we can make real progress because I think this is the trap, you know, a lot of people fall into is just like, ah, I'm in a bulking phase, it doesn't really matter, I'll kind of relax a little bit and just eat lots of food and you know, I'll deal with the rest when I might get into my cutting phase. It's like, okay, yeah, that's fine. But if you actually want to do it properly, you need to measure it, you need to manage it, and you need to make changes across that, you know, three, four, five month timeline in order to make real progress. So point number five, nutrition. So again, like when we look at a building phase, sure, we can just increase calories and that's fine. It doesn't really matter but there are some ways that we can actually set up our diet to be more productive and to allow us to make better progress. Uh, and the number one thing that I alluded to here was like more carbohydrates. So when we look at setting up our overall diet plan, it's like we want a surplus, obviously that's a no brainer. Um, we want adequate protein in there. So depending on, again, age, weight, height, sex, gender, you know, um, experience level in the gym, things like that, Protein targets can be varied. Again, maybe another topic for another episode, but as a general rule, like 1.5 up to 2.5 grams per kilo body weight, assuming you're lean, is a good place to start. Fats, we want, you know, maybe no more than one gram per kilo body weight, maybe a little bit more if calories are getting really, really high, but we want the vast majority of our calorie increase to come from carbohydrates. 
Again, as I keep harping on, more carbs, more glycogen, better gym performance, more muscle growth. So when we think about having body fat too high, and again, I know I keep kind of coming back to this first point of the seafood diet, people think that like in a bulking phase, man, just slam down heaps of fats, peanut butter, go out for burgers, chips, pizza, whatever, and they end up eating 300 grams of fat a day and then you know wonder why they get fat, obviously, but two, wonder why they can't push their calories high enough. So uh, fats, for a couple of reasons, will be less productive the higher your calories get. So when we look at increasing fat intake, it slows down the rate of gastric emptying and it slows down the rate of digestion. Now, obviously, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out if you are trying to push calories really high and your digestion is compromised because your fats are too high. It's like, how the hell do you, you know, suppose you bring your calories up really high if you can't digest food or you know, <laughs> get rid of food through gastric emptying? So calories, obviously, we want to increase over time. Protein, we want adequate protein. Fats, you know, one gram per kilo body weight thereabouts, a touch more is fine, but the rest from carbohydrates so that we do have a more productive building phase and we do have our diet sort of optimized for, I guess, digestion, because once you've really delved into a big building phase, you know, these four, five, six month building phases, the thing that will kind of, you know, have the wheels fall off is digestion. You just get to a point where you're so full all the time, your digestion is so compromised, you have no appetite, you're not hungry at all, that you just kind of need to pull up stumps and go into a maintenance phase. So we want to try and set up as many parameters and have as many things in place to kind of not allow that to happen right up until the last minute. So I guess the last point that I want to touch on for this building phase or bulking phase and kind of wrap it up there is just simply spending enough time doing it. So like I mentioned before, a lot of people will set those unrealistic time frames. They'll be too aggressive with their approach and they kind of get nowhere, end up just spinning their wheels and, and you know, not making any real progress. For an actual building phase to be really, really productive, we need to spend at a very you know, minimum time frame around 12 weeks. So myself, for my last building phase was about 20, 24 weeks. Uh, and that was you know, progressively increasing calories, progressively increasing um, training volume, intensity, frequency over like a six month period where the changes weren't super drastic. So it wasn't that it was hard to kind of adhere to or to actually stick to in the long term, but it's just ensuring that you're doing it for long enough, A, you know, to be able to adhere to that plan because if you increase your calories you know, on week one by 2,000, 3,000, you're just simply not gonna stick to it, it's too hard. But where we have small increases week on week, we can kind of just have that elevated approach over time that we get really, really nice progress. It's not too difficult to adhere to and that we can actually make real change without running into issues like digestion, body fat being too high, or just overall diet fatigue where you're just sick of eating food. So I hope that kind of helps. But I think that wraps up today's episode on building, bulking, massing, whatever you want to call it. But make sure you guys do all that fun stuff. Make sure you subscribe. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it with your friends. Leave me a comment below. And until next time, guys, peace.